servicing fluorescent lights, phototherapy and x-ray viewing. This video was produced as an educational project and is not intended to provide expert information. Always consult manufacturer's information and qualified professionals before attempting to service your biomedical equipment. Always follow safety warnings. This video will first provide background information about how phototherapy lights work. Then, this video will outline the basic components of fluorescent lights, followed by common problems and demonstrations of how to service fluorescent lights. Fluorescent lights are used for a wide variety of applications, including x-ray viewing, dermatology lighting, and phototherapy to treat medical conditions such as neonatal jaundice and skin disorders. For example, babies born with jaundice have extra bilirubin, which is the orange-yellow pigment in their skin. This is why babies with jaundice have an orange-yellow skin color. This condition can be treated with blue light that can break down bilirubin. A wide variety of makes and models of phototherapy lights may be used in clinical settings. Each may have device-specific instructions, so always consult a matching service manual before making repairs if possible. Fluorescent light bulbs are typically filled with an inert gas, typically argon, and have a powder coating that dictates the color of the light. The bulbs also have terminals on each side that will connect to the conduction strips. A typical fluorescent light source will have multiple fluorescent bulbs wired in parallel. Conduction strips provide points of electrical contact to connect the light bulbs to the rest of the circuit. These strips may be insulated with plastic to isolate the electrical contacts from the light casing. Starters act as time delay switches that are used in fluorescent lights to help the lamp light up. When the voltage is applied to the light, the starter allows current to flow through a bypass circuit. After the filaments at the end of the tube have been heated and start releasing electrons, this current causes the starter's contacts to heat up and open the bypass circuit, which directs all the current to pass through the tube and light the bulb. Starters come in a variety of brands and power ratings. One starter can be found behind each of the fluorescent bulbs in a fluorescent light source. The ballast is a transformer that regulates the current running through the light. They can last as long as 20 years, but bad bulbs in cold temperatures can decrease their lifespan. First, a 120 volt AC circuit passes through the ballast. The ballast acts as a transformer and steps the voltage up to 216 volts AC. The ballast also limits the current's magnitude to protect the electrical components of the light bulb. Next, the electricity passes through the starter at each end of the tube. The starter allows current to flow through a bypass circuit. After the filaments at the end of the tube have been heated and start releasing a flow of electrons across the tube, the starter's contacts open up, which directs all the current to pass through the tube and light the bulb. Note that only gas is used to connect the two ends of the bulb and no metal conductor is used to complete the circuit. Once the spike is delivered, visible as the initial flash of the bulb, electrons from the argon gas inside the bulb will excite and come into the contact with the fluorescent powder lining the interior surface of the bulb. The contact results in the emission of photons. These contacts happen with enough magnitude and frequency that the collisions are perceived as a steady source of light. A broken bulb is one of the most common problems with fluorescent light sources, so checking the bulbs is a good place to start when servicing a light source. To remove a bulb, twist the bulb 90 degrees, then gently pull it out of the connection holder. To insert a bulb, perform the reverse. Line the bulb pins up vertically with the connection holder slots, insert the bulb, and then twist it 90 degrees to secure it. If one or more of the light bulbs does not light when the light is powered on, turn off the light and unplug it from the power source. Then, switch the non-working bulb with a working bulb to test whether it's a bulb issue. After plugging the machine back into the power source and turning on the power, if the replacement bulb lights up in the previously unlit slot, it is likely that the original is bad and a replacement bulb needs to be purchased. If a previously working bulb does not work in the malfunctioning spot, check the electrical connection between the bulb terminals and the conduction strips. Using a multimeter, check that the AC voltage from terminal to terminal on opposite ends of the machine show the expected voltage from the power source. If not, there is most likely an electrical issue within the circuit of the machine. If the multimeter shows the expected voltage, try using pliers to apply inward pressure to the conduction strips to create a better electrical conduction, then reinsert the bulb. 
If the above tests did not work, the problem may be due to a bad starter. The only way to know if the starter is bad is to replace it with a new starter. In order to replace the starter, first remove the accompanying light bulb. Next, carefully twist the starter counterclockwise, then lift it out of the machine. To replace the starter, perform the reverse. Line up the feet of the starter with the holes in the machine, then carefully twist it clockwise until it is in place. Be sure that any starters match the power and voltage specifications of the original starter. You may need a new ballast if your bulbs are flickering or if the light makes a loud humming noise. The ballasts are inside the light source, so in order to service the ballast, it is necessary to remove the cover of the box. If it is determined that the ballasts are damaged, check pricing for replacements and for whole new fixtures. It is possible that it would be cheaper to purchase a new fixture than to replace the ballasts. For more information, we suggest the following websites. Additionally, displayed is a list of sample costs for replacing parts.